Imagine if you could never watch a movie or listen to music on the radio in your car ever again. This is what would happen if we did not support the arts. After doing my research and actively participating in music, theater, and speech-related activities in my school, I can ensure that the arts are an important aspect of our lives. A 2017 article called House Appropriators Ignore Trump's Proposed Cuts to Arts from Roll Call says backers argue that although they, the arts, receive little federal funding, their impacts are far-reaching and promote phil philanthropic giving from private donors. Arts programs in schools need more support due to their lack of funding amongst the public and in school districts and the cultural experiences they provide. To prove that more support is necessary, we will be looking into the history of and modern issues relating to public arts funding. We'll also be going into detail about budget cuts currently going on in schools and how important the arts are to people across our own nation. Let's start with public funding for the arts. Historically, public funding for the arts started in 1933, when according to a 2019 timeline by Leading Issues Timeline, the Public Works of Art project was created after the Great Depression, Depression as part of Franklin D. Roosevelt's New Deal. More government programs were created through history, like in 1965, when the National Endowment for the Arts was created. They were created to provide funding for many important projects. For example, these Pulitzer Prize winning Broadway shows, like Hamilton, August Osage County, and Next to Normal. Along with that, they've also provided help to get other smaller projects up onto their feet. And they do this by carefully choosing them in a special process. But in 2016, President Donald Trump proposed to cut the National Endowment for the Arts because he believed that cutting small programs would boost their finances to support other government programs. There's a lot of backfire from the people. Kevin Nance's 2017 article in Poets and Writers titled NEA at Risk, the Future of Arts Funding under Trump states, if the $3.9 trillion federal budget is envisioned as a pie, the endowment's most recent slice under President Barack Obama, which is $147.9 million, or 0.004% of the total, would hardly register as a crumb, much less a sliver. How could something so small really ruin our government's budget? Not to mention how much of an impact the arts have had on certain people. They have left a positive impact culturally in our country. <coughs> in a New York Times 2017 article by Soap and Dev titled, Trump proposes eliminating the arts and humanities endowment, the president of the National Endowment of the Arts said, I'm sort of dumbstruck. I'm hopeful that Congress will take the time to say, hey, wait a second, we need these cultural elements to our society. Clearly, he proves how much of an impact the arts have on our society. A big example of the impact they've had would be diversity. Now, while there is a lot, of, lot less diversity backstage and in Broadway business offices, there's been lots of diversity on stage. And this has been proven because of the Actors Equity Association's Diversity on Broadway Award, which is provided to the Broadway cast that has the most diverse members in their company. Along with that, colorblind casting has become more popular as years have gone by. But here's the bad thing. Artists are typically looked down upon in society. They are always viewed as poor people who need to get a real job. As someone who plans to go into the arts, that is absolutely terrifying. And Hattie Eldebeck's 2018 TED Talk, he made some very strong points. What are people not getting? The effects of the arts on different generations has proven to be very positive over the course of many years. Eldebeck also dives into the financial side of things. He discusses how Europe's major pu public arts funding program provides $2.4 million to their artists, while America's National Endowment for the Arts is only able to provide $124 million to artists in our country. In fact, even the military budgets for their band choirs and other music ensembles is twice as much as the National Endowment for the Arts budget for our own artists. That, that proves that they need more support. Not only that, but the arts have been proven to help students in various other situations. Because there's a lot of budget cuts in schools when it comes to the arts, studies show that kids who are involved in the arts are usually the ones who stay out of trouble. In Wilkinson's 2017 article in The Hill titled, Cuts to Arts Funding Could Be Detrimental to Academic Achievement, 
She claims that the Arts Education Partnership has found studies proving that arts students typically have a higher level of understanding in literacy and in math. In fact, they have even proven that kids involved in the arts are usually associated with higher SAT scores. In Hambick's 2016 article, Arts Programs in Schools Often in Danger of Being Cut, in the Washington Times quoted Principal Steve Ellis, and he spoke, you can't just offer, especially at the high school, math, science, social studies, and reading. What that does is cut out the courses that students can be interested in. The elective courses are what keep the students in school. The spirit of the school and the culture inside is more alive when these programs are active. And without funding, that would not be possible. In conclusion, schools need arts funding to create strong adults out of the younger generation. Funding for the arts boosts confidence in students and the spirit of the school. Not only that, but it would create more independent artists in our society that break the stereotypes and provide culture to those who need it. Therefore, funding for the arts would be more prevalent in our own nation. While some of the stress of eliminating funding for the arts has gone down in the last few years, there are still issues that constantly arise. And it seems that the art programs are always the first to be cut. Sometimes it may seem like it is not a big deal or does not affect you. But what if your favorite book, movie, or song never existed because those artists never received funding or support? If we show kids now that they will have support in that field at a young age, the impact of artists will succeed far into the future. Lastly, I'd like to end with a quote from John F. Kennedy. He once said, I'm certain that after, after the dust of centuries has passed over our cities, we too will be remembered not for victories or defeats in battle or in politics, but for our contribution to 